Taylor Swift terrifies me, and she should terrify you too. We're going to cover why here on Speechless Cut for Time. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to Speechless Cut for Time. I'm your host, Kev Ferris, 22-year-old conservative college student out of Central Illinois, host of Speechless on Cities 92.9, the news and talk of Bloomington Normal and beyond. But obviously not everything I want to talk about can make it onto that show. And so what do I do? I bring it right here onto YouTube so you guys don't miss a minute of what's going on in the world. And wow, today is fascinating. But before we get to it, don't forget to smash the like button on this video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit it right down there. Almost to 1,000. Would really appreciate it. Bring that notification bell, hit it to all because we both know ScrewTube doesn't like us uh, putting messages like this out there. Share it with your friends and comment what you think. But let's get right on into it. Yes, you heard me correctly. Taylor Swift terrifies me. She scares me. She scares me. Why? Well, let me take you through it. And let's start with what's been going on recently. In the last few weeks, Taylor Swift has lit up social media as she has had an alleged romance with the Kansas City Chiefs tight end. Travis Kelsey, who has also been recently featured in ads for Pfizer. Just thought you might want to know. The romantic rumors are unconfirmed, but she has been, had, but she's been at multiple games and has even been seen leaving his home. Hmm. And many in the media, even sports media, have been very focused more on, on Swift than the football games and even Travis Kelsey and his performance. The only time that they want to mention Travis Kelsey's performance is if it's good, does it have something to do with Taylor? If it's bad, does it have something to do with Taylor? A lot of my friends that are very into football, as, as I kind of am myself, are getting pretty annoyed with it. But Taylor Swift has become the must-watch player of the NFL. She really has. And that's not the only thing that Taylor Swift has had an impact on. Along with that, she has also had an effect on the entire genre of horror, like horror movies. According to Fox News, horror producer Jason Blum made the decision to move the release of his latest film, Exorcist Believer, like the first installment of The Exorcist canonically from the 50-year-ago Exorcist. Why did he do this? Because Taylor Swift announced in August that her concert film of her Eras tour would open the same day. Now, what day was that? What day was that? It was October 13th, which happens to fall on a Friday this year, meaning that one of the leading horror studios with a leading horror franchise, The Exorcist, moved their release date from Friday, October 13th, Friday the 13th, because Taylor Swift was releasing her film the same day, a coveted day for horror movies to be released. And he moved it because Taylor Swift was releasing her era's tour movie. Now, all of that is just the influence Taylor has had by no fault of her own, just by simply being who she is. So let's talk about who she is. Well, she's been on her Eras tour for quite some time this year. And now that, that, sm that smashed tons of records, some of which include the Eras tour will likely become the highest grossing tour of all time, with reports predicting she could make $520 million from the 52 city tour. Her opening night show in Glendale, Arizona, broke the record for her most attended concert by a female artist in U.S. history with 69,000 fans in attendance. A record number of fans logged into Ticketmaster to re register for the verified presale. That's 3.5 million people that tried to register, making it the largest registration ever, according to Ticketmaster. On the date of the sale, over 2 million tickets were sold on Ticketmaster, which is the most tickets ever sold for an artist in one day, according to Ticketmaster. And not just those, she's also had kind of a control over the earth. At her concert in Seattle in July, Swift sparked seismic activity equivalent to 2.3 magnitude to a 2.3 magnitude earthquake. So a small earthquake occurred because of the fans moving during her concert. Taylor Swift can literally move the earth. But outside of just music and earthquakes, she's played a part in breaking records that are much more consequential to this country. Last month, Vote.org told Insider that they had the largest national voter registration day since 2020 on two, last, the Tuesday that, that voter registration day was and credited the success in part to Taylor Swift's messaging. In an Instagram post to her 270 million followers, Swift said this, quote, are you registered to vote yet? I've been so lucky to see so many of you guys at my U.S. shows recently. 
I've heard you raise your voices and I now know how powerful they are. Make sure you're ready to use them in our elections this year. Okay, that's what she said. Now, vote.org noted that 35,252 people registered to vote and 157,000 eligible voters visited the site on Tuesday, that Tuesday, voter registration day, representing a 22.5% jump in total registrations and a 115% increase among 18-year-olds compared, compared to last year. Now, think about all this. Taylor Swift is not a political pundit. She has no political experience in anything, commentary or elected office isn't even related, at least as far as I know, to anyone that's in an elected office. But she has made her political opinions quite known. In the past, she's explicitly advocated against Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn, a Republican. She's advocated for LGBTQ plus rights and issues and has religiously supported the Democrats' platform. But once again, no direct relation to politics. And she aided in breaking the record for voter registrations. Her influence is undeniable. On top of all that, she's smart and ruthless. Now, how do I know this? Let's break it down. Three examples. First, she started her career as a cute country starlet in the early 2000s when country was more niche than it is today. Not as many people were as into country. Started growing. It's been different now. Some of my other videos cover that. But then... She, she became a, a big fish in a small pond, so she transitioned to the more lucrative, financially, pop genre with Red, with her albums Red in 1989 and the 2010s. And that's when her following and her wallet really started to expand. Now, that's just one example. Second, many of you may know, or you may not, that she waged a, a bit of a war with music streaming like Spotify and Pandora, everything like that, for quite a while. And the war has been long, so I'll just summarize it for the sake of time. Now, in the Wall Street Journal essay that she wrote in 2014, she said, quote, music is art and art is important and rare. Important, rare things are valuable. Valuable things should be paid for. It's my opinion that music should not be free. Now, the first part of that sounded like a Kamala Harris speech, but it's my opinion that music should not be free. What is she saying? I'm not going to put my music on streaming services or anything like that. Because you need to pay me for it. Now, most people that I know that are in music, myself being a songwriter myself, I don't, it's not about money for me. It's about the messages I'm getting out there. But it seems a little bit different for Taylor. Now, she eventually did put her music on streaming services after contract negotiations and battling multiple apps. She's criticized Apple Music's free trial as, quote, shocking and disappointing. She's written off Spotify as a corporate machine and much more while always showing that a lot of this seems to be about the money for her. So who's the real corporate machine, Taylor? But I digress on that. The point of this is that it shows a much different side of the cute country starlet she started out as, or even the innocent pop star that she portrays herself as. Have no mistake, I firmly believe this. Taylor Swift is ruthless and calculated to get what she wants. Now, why does that matter? I mean, why does that really matter? Well, I already mentioned that she has a significant influence on voter registration. Now, finally, this is my final example of how she's ruthless, calculated, and smart. As it relates to politics, she's very smart and calculated. Not necessarily in her viewpoints or her ideology. Frankly, I think her takes are idiotic. But her messaging and the way she goes about it. When her era tours started earlier this year, Swift began getting some flack from mainly far left media for not addressing LGBTQ issues in the Southern states. She was performing it. tweets and news articles were lighting up in late May when she was performing. Ex perfect example. When she was performing in Tennessee, she never once mentioned the evil legislation that was meant to stop children from having life altering surgeries and keep biological men out of women's sports. Oh, how dare you, Taylor? You're not mentioning that. Remember that was in late May. Now, a week later, early June, Taylor Swift performs in Chicago. Now, think about the differences in demographics, politically, of Tennessee versus Chicago. And then she gives this speech. Let's take a look and listen to what Taylor had to say in this speech.
the most beautiful experience for me to look out into the crowds on this tour. I'm looking out tonight, I'm seeing so many incredible, just individuals who are living authentically and beautifully. And this is a safe space for you. This is a safe space. This is a safe space. This is a safe space. I'm Taylor Swift. This is a celebratory space for you. And one of the things that makes me feel so wonderful is getting to be with you and watching you interact with each other, being so loving and so thoughtful and so caring. And so being with you during Pride Month, getting to, getting to sing the words to you need to calm down where there are lyrics like, can you just not step on his gown? Or shade never made it. such solidarity and such support of one another and such encouraging beautiful acceptance and peace and safety and i wish that every place was safe oh okay now listen to this now it started off as just just love who you are i'm so happy all my fans love who they are and you're so great leads up with a very positive tone now listen to the shift and beautiful for people in the community I really wish that Talk about pride month without talking about pain. They're they're oh. right now and recently and in the recent years, there have been so many harmful pieces of legislation that have put people in the LGBTQ and queer community at risk. Now she talks about the legislation. Now she talks about the legislation. And it's harmful and it causes pain. It's painful for everyone every ally, every loved one, every person in these communities. And that's why I'm always posting, this is when the midterms are. This is when these, these- And there's the call to action. There's the call to action. This is when the midterms are. Keep listening. Important key primaries. Because we can support as much as we want during Pride Month, but if we're not doing our research on these elected officials, are they advocates? Are they allies? Are they protectors of equality? Do I want to I love you guys so much. And happy Pride Month. And I just, I adore you. I really do. So, again, notice she's very, very smart. With the positive tone, I love all of you. Thank you. You guys are so accepting. It's so great to see it. But there's people that are bad. And they're putting harmful pieces of legislation. Things like the bill in Florida that says you shouldn't talk to young children about sexuality. Common sense. Bills in Tennessee. You shouldn't have biological men beating the crap out of women in women's sports. Seems logical to me. Bill's like, hey, maybe we shouldn't pump children full of har harmful, life-altering chemicals when they can't even really consent to it or chop off parts of their body because they feel like they're another gender. Huh. Who, who? Okay, Taylor. She's really smart about it, though. Taylor Swift is a calculated artist. She knew that political grandstanding wouldn't be received well in the southern states she was speaking in, or she was singing in. So she held off until she got to woke Chicago to get on her soapbox. Why? Because she'll still get the headline, and her fans that wanted to hear that in those southern states, which I guarantee you are fewer, but, there still are, but they still are there. The fans that wanted to hear that, they'll still be happy because, well, she made this statement. It'll still go viral on social media. She still made the statement. She didn't have to make it in Tennessee. Why risk the fan base that doesn't want to hear it? Why risk that potential financial loss? Who knows? Well, here's the thing. All of this culminates into why Taylor Swift scares me. She has a cult-like following that continues to grow, especially among young women that are at the time, in the time in their lives, they're trying to figure themselves out and where they stand on personal issues, social issues, political issues. And the thing is, is they will listen to Taylor Swift and her messages. And many of them will likely follow those messages because she's gained their respect and trust through music that is that has gotten through that, them through a hard time. I mean, Taylor Swift is known for breakup songs. A young woman going through a breakup 
could probably benefit in some way or find some benefit to music and listening to Taylor Swift's music. It's understandable. But many people will say, well, Kevin, a lot of celebrities talk about politics. How is this any different? Blah, 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 blah. Another stupid argument. Well, two reasons. First, Colin Kaepernick doesn't have the same following as Taylor Swift. When he took the knee, his his following was much lower. He was a less than mediocre NFL player. And now he's not even in it. And he's begging teams to come back. And then the second is people like Tom Hanks, Colin Kaepernick, any of the other ones that you want to say take political stands and often do. They don't have the same demographic. Colin Kaepernick, the people that were watching him on uh, on TV, were, for the majority, maybe early 20s men at best, and then into 30s, 40s men. People that don't, that usually will not necessarily say, hey, man, that football player, he has a political opinion. I'm going to base mine off of his. No, Taylor Swift, her demographic is young women. Again, impressionable young women. Just as much as Andrew Tate targets impressionable young men. I'll make the comparison. I believe it. And Taylor Swift has the ears, the hearts, and minds of basically half, if not more, of the next generation of legislators, presidents, even, potentially, and voters. So, and based on her war with streaming services over money, I don't believe any of this is about the message, her music, her grandstanding, none of it. I think it's much more about herself. Maybe even this Travis Kelsey drama is an act simply to get more attention on the Pfizer jab and stuff like that. But that's a little bit of a conspiracy theory. But who knows? What I believe is that Taylor will do what she has to do to advance Taylor. Taylor's all about Taylor. And that is what terrifies me. The liberal ideology being propagated to young, impressionable women because of her vast influence. What's the outcome? What do you think that'll be? And for anyone that wants to protect children from mutilation, push their gender ideology, for anyone that wants to have lower taxes and a strong economy, for anyone that doesn't want to have a forced government dependency from a parental state, for anyone that loves America, and wants traditional values to return. Taylor Swift should terrify you too. She should. You can still bop along to a song or two here and there, but Taylor Swift, the song, is much different than Taylor Swift, the woman, the brand, the message. I hope you guys got something out of that. I've been thinking long and hard about that one, and it's It took me a long time to kind of put it all together, but I do firmly believe that Taylor Swift scares me. She should scare you too. I hope you guys like that video. If you do, smash that like button, share it with your friends. Make sure they learn about it. Why does Taylor Swift terrify you? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to subscribe, everybody. Please subscribe. One of the best ways you could support the channel is to subscribe. Ring that notification bell to all. Do not miss a minute of any of this content. Thank you. God bless you. God bless America. And until next time, you've been watching Speechless. Cut for time. (laughs) 